Introducing Diderio D-Bud Hearing Protection. From loading, to sound check, to the roar of the crowd. For the music you love, at every level. guitar today we're at the Brooklyn Bowl with Declan of Amo and the Sniffers. How you doing Declan? Very good, very a bit hot but I'm good. <laughs> well welcome to the States this is your first headlining show on this run in the United States and this I know you just played a festival in LA but welcome to Tennessee, welcome to Nashville, glad to have you and glad to have you in the rig rundown. Before I get started though this is a familiar, unfamiliar face I should say. I always know you with the Strat. Yeah. What's going on? Um, yeah so I've had this since April this year. Um, yeah, Gibson hit me up and was like, do you want to try out one of our guitars? And um, yeah, I was like, well, I've got to get, got to get an Explorer. Yeah. I, I've never really liked Les Pauls. They're too chunky for me. And I've tried the, the SG as well, but I thought it was a bit too cliche as an Australian. I feel like Angus has already done that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, went for the Explorer. Now, uh, with the Strat, the way a aforementioned Strat, you had a Hot Rails, I believe, and maybe some other humbuckers mm -hmm. in the bridge position. Now, this having uh, being a proper two humbucker guitar, what's your experience with it since April? Um, yeah, like it's it's been good. It's been solid. Um, I've gone down. I used to play ten to fifty two. Okay. On the Strat, um, but now I'm back down to ten to forty six. Just make it a little bit easier for myself. Yeah. Um, but I'm always on the on the bridge. So I've got the uh, the neck down so I can do the cool woo oh, if okay. I want to or kind of kill it yeah. sometimes um, when when dialing it down is too too slow yeah um, but yeah always on 10 and yeah it's, it's been beaten up a lot already which I like yeah I can see on the back side here if yeah, we can get a shot the, there we go yeah you've already kind of on that belt buckle oh so. yeah that'll do the damage yeah <laughs> yeah that was it was pretty much like this after like three shows oh wow so I'm pretty proud of that <laughs> because I'm proud of it because the Strat I played for like four years and it never really got that beaten up because it was already like someone did like a home job relicking on it. Mm. So it never it never got to have any cool like signature like dents in it that yeah. I did. So yeah. Deck I'm, dents. Yeah, deck dents. So I'm really <laughs> proud of that. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned strings are down to 1046. What do you, what brands do you use? Um, I used to use Elixir. Okay. I like the coded. Now I'm like experimenting with some other ones. So I got the Dario ones. I'm gonna chuck some Ernie Ball Paradigm ones on after this as well. So just you, to try it out. What do you like about the the coded? I know that you've left that and kind of experimenting. But mm -hmm. what, what were you enjoying about those? Well, the first time I got into them was um, just from like touring. Um, I was like asking the dude at the music shop, like, is there anything that lasts longer? So he was like, try these coded elixirs, and so I was able to get a lot more life out of them. I mm. noticed like maybe when I first strung it up, it wasn't like the exact amazing tone straight away, but in terms of like keeping its tone over a long time, I found them really good because changing, you know, we're touring without a tech and changing strings was getting annoying. And, yeah. you know, um, the fear, I was only touring with one guitar too. So the fear of uh, breaking a string as well. I just needed like strings that would last a long time. So the coded is what I went with. Makes sense. It's a very pragmatic approach, you know, which mm. is a, it's very much part of your DIY ethos as the band and everything that you guys do and bring to the table. As music, musicians, it makes sense that that's kind of where you are with gear, too. Yeah, for sure. I think like a lot of the rig is not maybe something that I would go straight to the studio with. This is like pretty much just like touring conventionally, traveling a long way, you know, because being from Australia, we have to do big, long tours to make them, uh, you know, worthwhile for us. So light as possible that's why i got the enki yeah. case and and yeah simple now before we move on to anything else should we know have you done anything to this instrument pickups the same stock yeah everything's the same i think the only thing once i'll get once i get a chance to change is i'll, I'll make the bridge volume here just so i don't have to uh, reach as far again that makes sense yeah now it would be funny you saw it off camera not to put you on the spot but you had you were performing with the strat and the explorer and one of the other bands came to you and yeah. said yeah so yeah, Coffin, our, our good mates from Australia, they were touring with us. 
and I played the Strat one night and the uh, the Explorer the second night, and they they all came up to me and like, well, the Explorer sounds a lot better. Which I've told you, I found it. It was a nice compliment, but it was also very heartbreaking because that guitar <laughs> had been with me for a long, long time. You got you said you even shared a bed with it. Yeah, I shared a bed with it lots. Uh, falling asleep playing it and stuff. So yeah. Well, right on. And uh, over here, if you don't mind, I'll grab your yeah, V. Yeah, go for it. You got a V here, which is beautiful. Yeah, I already broke the, the volume knob on it. As you do. Haven't bought a strap for it yet. A deck dent, as we will say. A deck dent, yeah. Still got the plastic on and everything. It's in the wrong position, but <laughs> yeah, so. Um, is this mainly more of a backup and you try to stay at the Explorer? Is this like a... Yeah, I think like I'll, I'll just try and alternate between the tours and this tour, I think. And... If it gets a cool, you know, buckle rash, then maybe it will stay out a bit longer. But, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's a weird thing, you know, you, even though it's just, you know, a piece of wood, you find a way to have an emotional attachment to it. So um, this will probably be the one that's number two. And do you guys use any tunings or just or any different tunings that we should know about or just standard? Yeah, so we play half step down standard. OK, I uh, find that easier for Amy's vocals in the in the early days when we're, you know, touring so much and then um, yeah, our security has a capo on the second fret, and then our song Capital is dropped to C sharp. Yeah. So then, just pretty much that one tune in and a few other changes. Yeah, that's like all just come from the last album is the different tunings, yeah. And amps, this is what you told us uh, before we started rolling this is back line, so this is anything yeah. that's in your like stay at home, your actual personal arsenal, but. I've known that you kind of had been going all over the place. Black Star was a thing you, yeah. you were using. You got the Marshalls here. Tell me about that and why you landed on these. Yeah, so my, you know, all my favorite guitarists and music is all uh, 70s rock pretty much. And so I would prefer to have like the vintage JMPs. Yeah. But they're a bit, you know, harder to find around the world because, you know, we, we, we hire everything around the world. Um, yeah, just standard. 100 watt heads is what I needed. I used to have Black Star, they were great. They could just instantly could get the tone that I wanted. But um, we found them really hard to find overseas. Oh, okay. Yeah, so especially in Australia. So yeah, went with Marshall and you know, like the JCM 800 is just the standard kind of Marshall tone, you know, easily attainable overdrive. Yeah, and it's very familiar. Yeah. Now, is there anything, what should we know about how you're setting it up? Is Are both amps running, one's a backup, or how this is going yeah. through the cabs? Yeah, both running at the same time. They're both getting the same signal. It's not stereo. Mono, okay. So it's just to thicken it up a bit. I don't know how I started doing that. I think uh, I think a front of house engineer suggested that that was something that I wanted. He, he was like, well, I think you'd, you'd, you'd like this. So yeah, I went for two. And originally it was just two with two 412s. And then, you know, we got to be able to play some bigger shows. Than yeah. Else. Now it's four 412s. Well, to your sound uh, front of house guy's point, you know, if one sounds good, two's got to sound yeah, better, right? Yeah, two's got to sound better, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Now, you'd mentioned uh, off camera again, plenty of conversation we've had already, is yeah. about switching out cabs. You're trying to get a different flavor with different cabs. Yeah, so usually I uh, go for the AX and BX of, of uh, Marshall because they've got the greenback okay. speakers in there. So not as powerful, like if you'll notice, like the volume here is on one. Oh, right yeah. Now. It's on one, and uh, with my pedal pedals, I'm controlling the master volume as well. So this mm. is actually taking it down. That's not on Unity. Um, so yeah, like they, they're not as powerful, so they can they can be driven a bit better, and they've got more of a crispy sort of ACDC sort of tone, is what I would sort of describe it as compared to like a more mid rangey Guns N' Roses sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I think well, the best place is although the pedal board's here, I think to start up at the up top here is it the is. pedal that's not plugged yeah. in. Yeah, because it's a you know it's been noted in several interviews you've done that this yeah. pedal is a kind of a secret part of the equation of what you bring to the table. Is yeah. It? Well, this is like what I'd be using in uh, in the studio for um, for my lead tones. So this will be pushing the amp. It's a it's a dirty boost. Um, I've just I've got it cloned. The cloner's down there. It's kind of a mix between a a Distortion Plus and a DoD 250, which are both great pedals as well. Yeah. Um, I've got as well another backup boost pedal that is a Distortion Plus that I changed a capacitor in and put LEDs in instead of the, I think it's silicon diodes they mm -hmm. come in. So it's got more gain and a uh, higher mid-range boost, uh, which is pretty much what this is. It's called like higher mid-range 
and then some hectic gain as well. Now tell people how you got this pedal because it's not just yeah. a typical um, gear get. Well, yeah, we, we were about to play our first ever overseas show in Brighton in the UK for the Great Escape Festival. And I told our tour manager, front of house guy, that I needed like a, a, a volume and gain boost for lead. Yeah. Um, so he was like, okay, true. And because, you know, I, I, wa I watch a lot of rig rundowns and I watch a lot of um, pedal shows and, I, you know, unless you try them out, you still don't know, you know? Yeah. So I was always too scared to try them out because I didn't have that much money back then. So he was like, oh yeah, true, we'll, we'll see how it goes. And then at the end of our street that we were staying on, um, there was like a, a thrift shop, like a pawn shop, yeah. that in the window had this. And, and he was just like, oh, and I was like, oh, true, that looks cool, you know, let's, let's buy it. And it ended up like not just being like something that I liked, but I was like, holy shit, like this is, I love this. Do you remember how much you paid for it? I think it was either 60 or 80 pounds. I want to say 60 pounds, which is like 120 Australian, which would be like, I don't know, 70, 80 US? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what the US, I don't know what the exchange is. When you have your life turned into a movie, that'll be one of those <laughs> moments where it's like, oh, I was walking down the street, yeah. and then it's like, it calls out to you, Declan, it's yeah. me, it's the pedal. It, yeah, well, yeah, I mean, we could <laughs> probably make it. The you, yeah, we could probably make it a bit more sound. exciting than that. Maybe, yeah. 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 Maybe I got thrown into the window or something by a, by a bully. <laughs> <laughs> and then you had to yeah, softened no, your blow was the yeah. pedal. Yeah. But man, okay, so why, okay, why not plug it in, but you bring, you bring it with you, but not plugging it in, why? Um, I've kind of started missing it a bit. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's been cloned, but this has not got the same mid-range boost as this does. Um, but this was having, like, all sorts of problems as well, because, uh. it, you know, it was like, when I first bought it, it only had, one, I think, one screw in the back, and that's Jeez. it there. Um, I mean, like, you know, whoever made this, like, thank you so much, because... <laughs> Do you know if it's, like, a, a brand, or is it just something someone made? I mean, I'd say it's just something that someone's made, because it's, like, got the circuit yeah. board as the actual... Setting, or the, the, the yeah. controls. Yeah. So, I don't know who, what Evil Genius was making it, or what they were using it for, but it makes a pretty good lead boost, and it has a lot of volume, a lot of gain. Um, I wanted a pedal that could increase my volume because if we were touring without a front of house person, they wouldn't know when the solos were coming. Mm. So I was boosting my own volume on stage. Um, so yeah, I bought it with me and just out of, maybe I thought like I could just dabble with it a bit. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it is a lot harder to control than, than this one. And I, I see that this one doesn't have, the clone doesn't have the dip switches. So is that kind of oh, internally set? Uh, like, yeah, so I just told them how I liked it, which was the those down. three switches down. I got it. And uh, they, we, we revisited it. I, I gave it back to them because it wasn't having the same mid boost. And uh, they tried to mess around with the, how the actual power was going. They, they did a, a Fuzz Factory clone for some of the King Gizzard dudes. And okay. uh, they changed this, the, the way that the power was coming in and ended up changing the tone. So they tried it for my pedal, but it wasn't having the same effect. And now they're talking about putting the switches in. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, all right. We talked enough about it. Let's hear it. Let's, yeah, sure. Right, no, it's off. I mean, I'm pretty rusty, so yeah. Let's just first hear one of the tour. All right. So like, it'll instantly have a feedback. I think. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> to like if it wasn't on. And a other pedal that I assume is on because it's been on since we started talking is yeah. the Soul Food. Yeah. So that's always pushing. How do you run the pedal? Sorry to ask two questions. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I know I'm doing the, the big old uh, big no-no of putting the, the, the tuner is like two, two pedals in. Yeah. Um, but I know that's not how it should be i'm just way too lazy to unplug things <laughs> um there's already with four pedals on there and the four power supplies going in that like i'm already confused by the yeah by the, by the setting up of it so um yeah so the soul food is on the whole time just so i can control the the volume of the marshals okay and it adds a bit more compression to it as well and um i just sort of dial in a bit of a 
tone in there, so it's just above the mids on there. Um, and this and is, then, all these are running ahead of the amp? Like, is yeah. It, okay. Yeah, so again, like, it'd be great to use an effects loop, but that adds two extra, three extra, four extra leads if you're using two amps. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not going to do that, because yeah. that was just more for me to set up. So, uh, you know, exactly, I mean, that's what I'm talking about, is that, like, it's about touring this rig is just about like being able to like simply set it up. But that's kind of the G, like the, the, the kind of the awesomeness of this gig that we get to do and host this thing is that yeah. everyone has different reasons for doing it and none of it's right or wrong. It's yeah. It's what's working for you. It's like yeah, so. Yeah. And uh, so and the uh, MXR carbon copy mini that's on the whole time. That you can see how low the yeah the feedback is on it because there's just that much gain. Um, and I still don't know what I like as like a constant uh, delay setting. I used to have two repeats, kind of like a slapback sort of mm. thing. Now I've got a longer, just single repeat. Um, I'm just, because I, I mean, I, I can't really tell. I need like, if I was going to have it set up how I'd want to set up, I'd have to watch someone else play yeah. and then come and dial it in. Because, you know, once it's just like a sonic onslaught, then it's really hard to just know what. And you're in the middle of the battle too, so it's like yeah. it's hard to differentiate. Yeah. But that's on the whole time, so that's like a rhythm and a lead delay kind of thing. Yeah. Less to worry about. Both of those pedals are on all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, and so in front of the soul food is the is the boost. Okay. And uh, yeah, I didn't know what order to put them in, but I found out if it's after the overdrive, then it it boosted the volume too much, so we put mm. it in front. And, and I think yeah. the last thing we need to talk about the ABY pedal with the yeah. dirty sticker. My my housemate Costi, he put that sticker. Oh, he gave me that sticker. I think I put it on there. It's definitely raised some eyebrows. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's um, and that's, and that's nearly got a nine volt in it as well. I never used to have a nine volt in there, so I could never see the LEDs. Uh. So you had to guess whether you had both of them on, or, you know, <laughs> which was always good fun. But yeah, got a nine volt in there. Because I'm happy to tour over nine volt now. That's how like simple I'm talking. That like yeah. I want it so simple that I don't want to have to bring a little battery with me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just running into there. And there's my capo. There's my wallet. You got some shades. Sunnies. I think this is Texas. Texas country wallet. iPhone seven that's about to die. I think. Yep. <laughs> we covered all the rig and more. Deck. Thanks, Abe. Thank you so much. Cheers. Everyone out there, stay safe. Check these guys out on tour.